Commander, once we move on the Advent Network Tower, it's all or nothing. We won't have time to advance our research or deal with the wounded. We should only deploy once we're fully prepared. Setting course for hey there guys, this is uh, N7 Eastern Commander John Europe. here. I'm um, doing some post commentary here because I was we're just doing this mission. I, this is still a blind playthrough we'll and Bradford's kind of right talking over me. <laughs> so I'm just doing test recording still but I, I really wanted to um, record this mission because I do want to get some videos of XCOM 2 up. Anyway, you see what I'm doing here right now is I'm just prepping my squad. You see, I I wasn't sure this was the supposed to be the last mission, like because I said, like I said earlier, it's a blind playthrough. So I was just prepping uh, most of my units just in case in advance, like if it, just in case if it's like the UFO Avenger, not it, just in case if it's like the Avenger Defense mission where you just get reinforcements coming in and they just come in with whatever they had. So I just wanted to make sure that they had whatever they needed to have right at that moment. So anyway, about this mission here, I decided to take one of every class and I was contemplating to bring a medic, but I was like, well, if I don't, if I'm only gonna bring four units, I'll also make sure that I don't need to use the medic in the first place. So I decided against bringing on uh, the specialist medic and I decided to go for the uh, more offensive specialist type. Which is uh, Ellie right there. And it's all kind of sped up. And obviously you guys can see I have a bunch of yeah, UI mods and all installed. I I've, I like I like most of them. Also, a lot of the mods on XCOM 2 are great. But um, anyway. So uh, everyone's got a reason here to be in the squad. I have um, me, who I'm an officer. I'm a great near officer and I got holo targeting. And basically I, I'm, I'm kind of more of a support unit. I'm actually like a major. Everyone else is a colonel on this team so far at max rank. I'm not max rank, but max rank on um, on Grenadiers isn't as important to me because what is the last? I forget what their last skills are, but it's it's like rupture and, and something else, and I, I really don't care about either of them. <laughs> it is all going really really fast right now, so kind of hard for me to explain everything. <laughs> but um. You saw right there on my sharpshooter, I had blue screen rounds on here. Of course, blue screen rounds are really good on sharpshooters since they can take multiple shots. And I also... Yeah, I was afraid to finish talking. With Advent in an uproar, we'll access the portal and take the fight to their front door. All goes well, they won't even see us coming. It's risky, but it's the best shot we'll get. Once we start this, there's no turning back. So yeah, um, I got special rounds on everyone, pretty much. I have blue screen rounds on my sharpshooter, because she's a gunslinger. Uh, I got armor piercing rounds on my ranger, because she's got rapid fire. And she also has a death metal buff. infiltrate the network tower. Locate the access point and hack in to seize the broadcast signal. She got death from above through the advanced warfare center. And just because if you don't know what, <laughs> I don't know, it's a really funny glitch. I, I, I don't know why it's doing that. I guess just to make sure that you all have concealment or something. And it just kind of went overkill on that. <laughs> but anyway, uh, my ranger, um, Nidian, she has death from above. And if you guys don't know what that is, it's basically if you kill an enemy while you're on higher elevation than them, you get your you get a free action point back. And essentially she'll be able to like kill off all the weak enemies easily. Just kinda like in the zone back in, in uh, the first XCOM. Enemy enemy within or enemy within EU whatever. And um but they don't have to be exposed or flanked. They just you just have to be on higher ground than them. So it, it's really strong. And you can see right there, I gave her an, um, an extended mag, and I also have a, a superior Understood. scope and superior uh, autoloader. Or is it an autoloader? It's some kind of autoloader. Basically to make sure she can keep up with the kills as much as she can here. And, um... I'm hard to kill. You should know that. <laughs> I got all these different voice packs. Man, I love these mods. But you see right here, it's my first time playing this map. Well, this kind of mission, because this is my first playthrough, so... Yeah, I, I'm not really sure if this map is static or not. I, I don't know anything. It's blind. But, um... 
I also don't know if, this, if a timer will pop up, so that's why I'm not really trying to take my time. It, it says no timer right now, but sometimes the timers do come up. Also, it is like 2 o'clock when I'm playing this mission, so <laughs> if you see any um, any dirt moves, then you can kind of tell why I just kind of woke up and played this Good mission copy. real quick. On <clears throat> but anyway, when I'm playing the do on this so far, I don't know where they are. I could use... um. The, the scanning protocol I do have it but I was kind of like kind of on the time uh, I guess I could have used it right there yeah I guess I could have used it there I, honestly I kind of forgot about it <laughs> I usually uh, pick field medic instead of uh, instead of scanning protocol let's move because I usually bring battle scanners so that's why I don't usually have the scanning protocol plus I keep forgetting that it's two uses that I have instead of one since I have a gremlin mark three now but yeah um, but looking back on this, I should have used the scanning protocol. Even though I saw those two over there, I still should use it to make this next move safer. But for some so reason, so I good. didn't. Uh, did I move up? Maybe I moved up. No, I, I think I just probably overwatched everyone. Anyway, I wanted to get this high ground advantage because I wanted to make use of death from above. And it's really good in here, especially with the other piercing rounds. The armor piercing villains are great because I'm the Andromedon, but in case you don't know, is an enemy on the left side over there. It has like five armor or something. It's pretty, it's pretty high. But the armor piercing villains actually just negates five armor, so it kind of just bypasses all of that, which is great for um, get killing it in its in its uh, organic form. I like to say because it's still organic. You know, it's it's mechanical at the same time. I like these armor piercing rounds to take it out with that form. And then when it revives, use the blue screen rounds and a sharpshooter with, uh, with fan fire to take it out really fast. So, not much going on so far. We're just um, getting set up here. Don't know what's on the right side yet currently while I'm on this video, on this mission. Solid copy. So I'm trying not to get too far to the right, but I also don't want to like leave my my right flank exposed just in case of some just walk up on me. I mean, like I said, I still don't know if there's a time limit on this mission, as far as I know. Copy that. While I was doing this, so I'm kind of making all of these dashes, kind of being it's not as risky since we have concealment, but I don't know. Since I didn't use scanning protocol, I just felt kind of paranoid. That I would find something, and there's some enemies on the right, right there. And um, thankfully, they weren't close enough to expose Ninian on the roof. So we still got concealment. And handily, since we have, <laughs> I just sped it up here as I was just thinking about what I should do. <laughs> like over here, I wasn't sure. Like I was like, I don't want to get flanked from this from the pot on the right. There's a squad on the right that I didn't want to see Ninian in. They would see her since she would she doesn't have like corner cover essentially. So I was like, okay, maybe I could just jump down there. And the indicator was telling me at first that yeah, if you break through this, you'll break stealth. But then it went out okay, and I, I looked at a different it angle and right? said that I wasn't gonna break this. I was really confused. Anyway, I spread it up so <laughs> So I can't really talk as much on this part. But spoiler alert, my stealth gets broken by this damn sector. <laughs> and we had to go loud. Well, only needing as to go loud because I had the intel bonus that you can sell off of this mission. And it gives individual concealment to all of you. It's uh, needing to hit that 10 damage. And thanks to the armor piercing, she just ignored all the armor. So that's really cool. Alright, here's Edith and John Badon's going below the building. And then here's the sectoid taking a shot, but. Because I had the rate seat on her, she just decided to dodge that, so uh, it doesn't really matter if she hit anyway, so... <laughs> I wasn't really scared of that sector, to be honest. It wasn't that scary. Now, you might be wondering, why didn't I just shoot that sectoid last turn? Well, it's because Hunter's uh, instinct didn't take effect for some reason. I I'm not sure if that's on purpose, but even though it was flanked, technically, it didn't count. I guess because we were in concealment, and I wanted to make sure I got a 100% chance to kill that sectoid on the first shot and it wasn't a hundred percent chance because it's only a 66 percent chance to kill without a crit okay if you, if you factor in a crit it's like a bit higher to kill them or something but basically it wasn't a hundred percent so i didn't want to take that chance because if um if i shot 
and it didn't kill the sectoid, where Nidin doesn't have any more moves anymore then. So uh, that's why I didn't want to take that risk. And your rapid fire is kind of buggy with that from above, in my experience anyway. Because if you kill in the second shot of rapid fire, sometimes, oh, I, I can't say sometimes. It only, I only did it once and it didn't work. But I, I shot on rapid fire on my second shot and it didn't give me my free action. So that's why I was just kind of iffy on actually doing that on the sectoid. But anyway, we killed the sectoid here. Over here I'm contemplating what I should do. Uh, finally, at the end, I just decided that I used my salvo ability to shoot a grenade over there, destroy the cover, make the Andromedon kill a war by needing in one shot, and also the snake. And um, yeah, we're just gonna death from above, do its course, do its job. I already killed one circle and uh, we killed an Andromedon over there, right there. So that's really good. Yeah, she is very hungry. She's gonna kill that snake too. Right there. There's that Andromedon turning into mechanical. So armor piercing isn't as strong, but strong against it anymore, and she just did a 15 damage crit. <laughs> and yeah, armor piercing is not as strong against it anymore. But see, PK over here is blue screen, so it's a great, it's a great combo right there. But I go ahead and use a lightning buttons here just to um, get some extra damage in there. I want to try saving the fan fire if I can. Also, I did the lightning hand because I really wanted to try to hack this thing. I wanted to try to hack it, but what I should have done actually is um, I'm thinking I should have used my aid protocol because I have, um, what is it, threat, threat assessment? Yeah, I got threat assessment on him, so I should have used that first, just in case, but I, I don't know, I just thought I was going to get this and even if I failed to hack, I was able to kill it, I'm able to kill it anyway, so that's why I went ahead and did this. Even though I wrote respect, I should have just killed it and not even bothered with the hack. That's what I should have done. Or I could have gone for the shutdown. Shutdown probably would have been safer, to be honest. But I was thinking since we only had four people in our squad, I, I really wanted to take control of that. And I, mean, I hit it with blue screen around, so it did debuff attack. Defensive. So th that's that's my reasoning right there. It, it didn't work out for me, but you know we end up killing this Andromedon shell anyway. I, decided, I was contemplating whether to take a sniper shot, but I was like, nah, I'm not going to take a sniper shot. Uh, instead, I have her... Take her quick draw shot, and it critted and killed. That was really good. That's I right. wasn't, <laughs> yeah. I didn't need it to kill because Needian could have just finished it off with, uh, with her death from above anyway. So you know it wasn't necessary, but it was really nice. Save some ammo. Understood. You know? Not that it matters because she has an auto lower. She's got an advanced auto lower, so she can shoot twice. So here I go using my second grenade. You know, I think it's a little excessive, but we only got four people here. And we, we've taken out how many? Well, we've taken out three, I guess you could say. Oh, four? No, five? Yeah, five. We took that one sectoid. No, what is that for? Whatever. <laughs> but it's pretty good, you know. We, we killed a lot, and maybe in, I got to shoot rapid fire, and she crit him in her first shot, which is really good. And so, that's an about procced, because, I, I guess because it was, um... The first shot, like I said, uh, the other time when I did it, uh, I killed a rapid fire on high ground, but the second shot, it didn't proc death from above, so, yeah. I just had just about enough, so I just went ahead and uh, <laughs> fan fired this thing. <laughs> Might have been a little overkill, but you know, I wanted to keep an overwatch, just in case something else came. So, that, that was my reasoning right there. And uh, nothing really comes for the next couple of turns, I just go back into concealment, Reninian, have her scout up for a bit. And uh, I know, I know from the shadow chamber earlier in the mission, there was only nine enemies. But I, I kind of forget to keep count. You know, I, I know I killed four now, but in the heat of the moment, I just kind of didn't count. But now that I think about it, is that like one, two, three, four, five? It's actually ten enemies, but I don't think they count the turret as an enemy. Yeah, I don't, I don't think they count the turret as an enemy because you don't have to kill the turret on like route missions. So yeah. It's probably, the turret is probably not counted. But anyway, over here, I, I also didn't care about the loot, because I thought this was like, this is like endgame, so I didn't care about it. <laughs> so that's why it's, plus I was expecting a timer to pop up any time now, so. So over here, ne PK actually has a chance to one-shot this codex. Well, if she didn't dodge the codex, it would have died. But it was kind of unfortunate that she didn't get the 13 damage that she was supposed to on base, because the codex dodged, so that kind of sucks, but you know, that's, it's XCOM. It's RNG. So, um, so my next alternative here is to go ahead and use another salvo 
uh, launch. This time with the blaster launcher, so I can wreck everything there. I f at first I thought it was gonna blow up the turret. Like, well, it did hit the turret, but I thought it was gonna like blow up the ceiling or something. But I guess that ceiling's just too strong to blow up or something. I don't know. It's, it it just didn't blow You're up the ceiling, even though it hit the um, <laughs> it hit the turret. But it didn't matter because I ended up killing the turret anyway. So, so yeah, went ahead and um. Took out that one codex, weakened the Dromedon. It probably wasn't the best blaster launcher used, but hey, it, you know, it worked. I'm gonna hit it, um, get a hollow target in here, and I ended up killing it anyway. Now I think about it, I have an advanced scope that I can put on my uh, Revenant right there. I, um, for some reason, I didn't think about it, and didn't think about taking off the stock. I just have a standard stock on there, because I thought the end of the gun looks cool. Just, not a stock, uh, a repeater. I thought the gun looks pretty cool with that repeater at the end, but it's only a 5% and the, the advanced scope is more practical, I think. Not that I rely on hitting with my, you know, machine, my plasma machine gun right there. I don't rely on it, but you know, it's nice to get that shredder buff, shredder, you know, extra shredder attack on there. And over here I derped, I put a threat assessment over here, so she would be able to get covering fire on the next turn, but I kind of forgot to reload with my auto loader. So I didn't get that. <laughs> Not that it mattered. It was it was too far to um it's too far to melee me anyways, I didn't care. But I could have got a shot off that turn. It would have saved me some RNG for sure. I, I was contemplating using combat protocol, but I really did not want to activate that Archon back there. The sector that I care less about. The Archon is what I was worried about. So even though I could have got a 11 damage on that turret, it just wasn't worth the um, chance of activating the pod in the back, especially since it was the last turn. I, in fact, instead I just overwatched with Ellie, hoping that Andromedon shell would move up, but it didn't. It um, <laughs> moved back and forth for some reason. It was, it was really strange. I don't know why I did that. So yeah, I waste. I kind of wasted that there assessment. You know, it wasn't a waste because it did. It did keep Nidian from getting hit. She's only she got hit once, but it was only it was a dodge too, and it was only a sectoid. So I was like, whatever. Over here, I was contemplating seeing if we could see the turret from there because I I could see the turret over there, me in that position. But I guess not. And I wanted to get height advantage too, but it, I was thinking about death from above. That's what I was thinking about when I was trying to go up there, but it wasn't gonna happen. Nope, it wasn't. Uh, the only way for me to get that Dromedon and holo target it was for me to move up. Of course, silly me, I forgot that the turret overwatched. And <laughs> I was like, oops. <laughs> I ran to overwatch, but I didn't care anyway. It was just a turret. Copy that. It had 19 health anyway, so I didn't care. Into armor. It wasn't going to go through my armor. I also have um, um, the, the armor mod, which... Uh, how do I say it? The injury mod, where you only take, like, moon time if you have your health go past your, um, you know, take damage past your armor value, which I had a lot of armor, so I didn't really care, pretty much. I, would, I just shrugged off that little turret fire. It's the same thing if you ever played, uh, well, it's the same thing in vanilla, but it's in vanilla you don't get as much base armor. You don't get as much bonus armor, essentially. But in Long War, it, it happens a lot more often, especially it's a lot more important too, because moon time sucks. But, um, yeah, besides that, I went ahead and let Nidian take out this turret. See, if I, if I reloaded the first time, Nidian would've got covering fire and shot it on the last turn. And it was like, what was it? it was like an 82%. Okay, it could've missed, you know, it's like a 20% chance. You know, and I, if I just, you know, reloaded last turn, I would've got my Overwatch shot. They get me closer, this is gonna be hand to hand. So I was trying to make sure the whole squad's ready. I still didn't have a timer. But I still didn't want to stay too long because I, you know, I don't know when it's going to activate. So I try to get a bit closer for that Archon. I know it's still there even though I don't see it. So I, I try to get PK a bit closer because she has, she's my gunslinger. Even though she has a sniper, that Archon can dodge. The and if they dodge, it, uh, this freaking sucks. And um, yeah, actually I don't know what I'm talking about because it works, you know. <laughs> They didn't move. I thought they were going to move, but they didn't. So I took this opportunity to um, get everyone set up. I, that, that might be a bug. I don't know. 
you know, XCOM 2 has a lot of bugs right now, so even though I'm in vision, I'm on my way. It, they didn't see me, I guess. I guess I just have longer vision or something. Oh, wait, no. That's right. I have that squad vision hack perk that, that you can get from Intel bonus. So actually, that's why I can see them more. Sure thing. That's why I can see them, but they can't see me because I have that perk. My, my uh, vision has been increased for the whole squad. So that's actually not a bug. That's actually a feature. Because I can actually see them before they can see me. So that's really cool. <laughs> so let me let me take all of that back now. Um, I think I was trying to think see if I can get death from above somehow. But it's kind of overkill. I, in the end, I decided to just go ahead and shoot that sectoid. And get that nice juicy crit. 13 damage. <laughs> I forgot, what was that damage? Was it seemed the 9 so I can't even remember it. Doesn't matter, I wrecked that so totally. So yeah, I went over here. Needing an already shot, so I can't get um, a bonus focus fire. Focus fire is one of the officer picks, by the way. If you get that uh, officer, no, if you get the leader pack uh, mod you gotta be kidding. from the Steam Workshop. It's made by one of our stairs, you know. Anyway, focus fire is really good. It stacks really well with hollow targeting, so I like giving it to good in the ears. I like, I like making good in the ears, my officer. That's also totally not biased for me being an officer and everything. <laughs> totally not biased at all. But anyway, I like stacking it as well. I don't know if it, like if you shoot twice, if you use rapid fire abilities, like you know rapid fire and chin shot. I don't know if that adds more aim because like eight, each shot that's shot by the enemy, each shot you take at the enemy, it's supposed to get plus four aim to them. It's kind, of, it's kind of like a hollow target and gets better. But I don't know if like rapid fire abilities, multi shot abilities, like add more like rapid fire adds eight instead of four because he shoots twice i don't know i never i never took the time to notice I, I really wish i had i gave her spider armor she also has a gas bomb i uh <laughs> i kind of forgot to take that off i should have gave her a spider suit or something or a raid suit i really should have i i, I kind of forgot that she had the gas bomb i mean it would have been useful there was a lot of organics so it still would have helped it just you know acid bomb Obviously, it would have been better. Yeah, uh, whatever. I just brought it just in case for some reason. If I decided to do quick draw and then throw a grenade instead of shoot again. <sighs> but in the end, it would have been better if I just took a spider shoot or something. Damn, I wouldn't get fanfire. I apparently missed a shot. Or I, I don't know what that was. I guess I hit two and then missed one. Maybe. <laughs> but I had Ellie go ahead and take the last shot. And he has threat assessment too. Just in case, if something else comes on, it's really nice having that free shot. You can like aid protocol and take a shot and still overwatch in the same turn. It's really good. And um, yeah, he kills that sector right there. Damn. And the whole map is rubbing. They don't like to hold still, do they? Also, I think you normally can only bring three units on this mission. Yeah, I think it's only three, but I had the intel bonus you can get. That lets you start with an with a extra squad member. So that's why you have four instead. It's definitely a lot easier having four. Target in range. Move to hack the command console. Yeah. I, I forgot to also mention what difficulty this is. This is on commander difficulty, so I am um I'm still getting acquainted with the game. I do want to do a legend eventually, so but I just wanted I wanted to enjoy my first <laughs> my first Hi. run. Not saying that I wouldn't enjoy Legend, but you know, I wanted to Get acquainted with Consider the game first. Before I go to Legend. Anyway, I wasn't sure this was the end. Understood. So that's why I was being a bit more cautious. I, I didn't realize that I already killed nine enemies. I actually killed ten because of the turn, but you know. And uh, I was like, yeah, sure, I'll take the 100%. <laughs> Last, you know, of course, this time when I don't take when I take the 100%, it gives me enough to get the other one. Of course. <laughs> OMG. <sighs> yeah, so this, this is a pretty good mission here. Also, spoiler alert: this is the last. This is one of the last missions. Don't worry. I cut out the the the, the ending cutscene to the end, so <laughs> I should have. It's kind of I kind of should have said that earlier, really, right? but it's kind of a bit too late. But I did put the cutscene at the end. So if you don't want to see it, make sure you don't watch after this. Just like end the video now, so you don't see it. Okay, bye.
has cleared the perimeter, sir, meeting limited resistance. Well done, Doctor. Yes, it would appear the feedback pulse is having the intended effect. Shen, status. Did it work? Advent assures us this breakthrough will be available to all citizens immediately. We go live to the speaker for more. Fellow citizens, for 20 years we have put our trust in Advent, in the elders, because we believed a better future is possible for all. Today, that trust, that belief has been rewarded. Advent peacekeeping thing across the world, carrying the greatest gift from the elder. A revolutionary gene therapy, yes, but so much more. This is an end to disease, to decay, to pain. The beginnings of a new tomorrow, available to all of us today. Truly. Humanity finally takes its rightful place amongst the stars.